Hi, I'm Chris Wall, Chief Technologist at Rubrik, and welcome to another Engineering Deep Dive video. So John, if I understand it correctly, you have quite the educational background, master's and a PhD in computer science, and you're working on a real-time bidding system over at Rocket Fuel, which kind of blows my mind. And how did you take what you've learned at these experiences and your, you know, obviously your very in-depth education and apply these industrial strength al algorithms to Rubrik? Uh, so I did my PhD in algorithms and data structures and, and <laughs> at Rocket Fuel, uh, we were working on a, a distributed bidding system that handled tens of billions of requests. Tens of billions? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, we had to execute, uh, you know, targeting logic and, you know, budget constraints and uh, execute machine learning models uh, against all of these requests and respond in, you know, a short uh, time period. Here at Rubrik, uh, we're managing our customers' data, and mm. it's important for them to have, uh, you know, fast and highly available access to all of the data that we're managing, uh, because if there is any loss of availability or if it takes too long, then there are real financial consequences for our customers. You know, I try to apply the the same ethic that we applied at Rocket Fuel when managing ad campaigns to uh, to our customers' data here at Rubrik. So let's unpack that a little bit. You said that you were working as a PhD around, what was it, algorithms and data structures and that kind of jazz. Mm -hmm. How did that directly correlate to the work you were doing with Cerebro? Yeah, so my work in algorithms was on how to efficiently store and retrieve data. Mm -hmm. And obviously, as a data, data management company, uh, storing and retrieving data fast uh, and storing it efficiently is uh, very important for meeting our customers' requirements. Sure. So in a previous video, I was talking to Fabiano about Cerebro, you know, kind of the brains behind Rubrik. And we were talking about the declarative nature of policies and the fact that, you know, back in the day, or still currently, depending on what you're using, users have to go in and build jobs and kind of walk the system through what to do with data. How is that different with the policies that Rubrik provide for a customer? Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, we have a declarative policy engine. Mm -hmm. And the idea there is that uh, we don't want customers to have to worry about uh, unnecessary details and complexity that could get them into trouble or just be a hassle for them. Uh, so instead, we have them just define a, a policy to say uh, what data should exist where in our system. Then, you know, all the details of you know creating tasks and and scheduling them and distributing the work across the cluster and making sure that the primary infrastructure is not being trampled on. Uh, so we handle all of that complexity behind the scenes. So that sounds powerful because then the SLA policy is really just expressing a business outcome and then Cerebro kind of handles that data lifecycle management. Mm -hmm. So switching gears a little bit, let's talk about the Blob Engine and mm -hmm. kind of how that fits into the equation and what it's doing under the covers. Yeah, so uh, the Blob Engine basically takes the SLA uh, policy engine uh, as input mm -hmm. and um, we use the SLA policies to figure out uh, to schedule all the tasks that are necessary to meet that policy behind the scenes. Okay. And then the Blob Engine internally handles details such as compression, deduplication, consolidation, and garbage collection of retired data uh, from the system. Um, and, it, and basically it's designed to do that efficiently and behind the scenes so that the, uh, the user doesn't have to know about that. So it sounds like the data lifecycle management is automated. But well, my next question would be around the sources that we're backing up. How do we kind of handle what's coming into the system or differentiate the different workloads that we're protecting with the Blob Engine? So each of the sources that we protect, mm -hmm. um, and the Blob, Blob Engine is designed to work with many different sources. Um, so when data is coming into the system, uh, we first try to optimize the data at the source. Then once the data is in the system, we optimize the data by doing things like deduplication, compression, and consolidation and garbage collection. And what about data management services? These are things like archive and replication. You know, kind of mm -hmm. walk me through that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, the Blob Engine manages data once it's inside our system. Okay. Uh, and uh, for example, a customer may want to have data protected for 30 days on the local rubric cluster, okay. uh, but they also want that data replicated to a remote cluster so that they have a backup of their backup, essentially. And then maybe after 30 days, they want to archive that data to a cloud storage provider, such as S3 or Microsoft Azure. So John, the million dollar question, restores, right? Mm -hmm. And so how does the Blob Engine allow me to do instant recovery of the workloads that I'm protecting? So one of the common problems in any system that does deduplication is fragmentation. And the problem with fragmentation is that the data that you want to access is stored, is scattered all around the cluster. Yeah. Uh, that makes it 
very slow to access that data. So we designed the Blob Engine specifically to handle this uh, so that when you want to, when you have a tier one application that's critical to restore instantly, uh, it's very fast to do that because our system is continuously defragmenting and optimizing the storage. All right, so kind of wrapping things up, what does instant recovery enable you to do today that you can't normally do with other products or solutions? So uh, consider the, the following type of case. So if, you're, if you have an application that gets hit with ransomware, uh, it's important to be able to quickly identify the most recent snapshot of that application that is unaffected by the ransomware so that you can not only identify that snapshot, but also do the recovery instantly to yeah. get yourself uh, back online as quickly as possible. All right, well, John, thank you very much for your time, and thanks for watching another Engineering Deep Dive video.